Good morning, guys. Welcome to Refresh, our Monday morning devotion here at All Nations Memphis. My name is Trey, and I just want to just ask you guys to just start sharing this live. Make sure you share it with your friends and your family members. Even if you have some enemies, whoever you think uh, will just enjoy this word, just begin to send it out and make sure that it goes across the airways. We're just going to first pray before we go into the word. Father, we thank you for your spirit. We thank you, God, that you are here. We thank you, Father, for your word. And we thank you, God, that you will lead us into all knowledge, wisdom, and understanding in Jesus' name. So on today, we are still with uh, our deliverance team. And I am a part of the deliverance team here at All Nations Memphis. And we are embarking upon a study uh, on spiritual authority and spiritual um, warfare. And so today, I will be just having a conversation with you guys about have understanding our spiritual authority. And if you just want to put a title on this, you can put our right to fight because we do have a natural spiritual birth right to fight. I think that it is a trick of the enemy to count us out even before we say yes to entering into the battle and entering into the war. I think many times I find myself in conversation with people or just, you know, praying for people people and they feel so defeated or feel like they don't have any type of authority or power to fight what they're going through or to fight the schemes and tactics and the, the, the attacks of the enemy. And I think that that is a way that he implements fear into the body of Christ by making us feel like we're counted out before we even count ourselves in. And so I think that through this, um, short teaching and devotional, I want to just uh, spark up something on the inside of us that not only shows us, but puts us in a place where we are bold enough to encounter or to stand before the enemy and say, hey, look, I know who I am in God. I know what I have. I know what I can do because Christ has given this to me. And so, like I said, it is our natural uh, uh, birthright and spiritual birthright to operate in authority. Uh, we're just going to start off uh, in Genesis 1, Genesis 1 and 26. Um, and it says, then God said, let us, um, a lot of my scriptures that I'll be reading will be in the Amplified version because I'm extra saved like that. I'm just playing, guys. But um, but just because I like the Amplified, I like how sometimes it uh, breaks down things. So Genesis 1 and 26, then God said, let us, let us, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, um, in one, who is God, uh, we're not going to go into that conversation, but let us make man in our image according to our likeness, not physical. This is where the Amplified is implementing some information right here. Not physical, but a spiritual personality and moral likeness. So let us make man in our image according to our likeness and let them have complete authority. And then it goes on uh, into what we have authority over. And it says, let, us, and let them have complete authority over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, the cattle, and over the entire earth, and over everything that creeps and crawls on the earth. So God created man in his own image. This is verse 27. And in the image and likeness of God, he created him, male and female, he created them. So we even see here that even as we were created as mankind, we were created in the image and likeness of God. There is so much authority and power in that. So do not continue to allow the enemy to take you out, to, to, to make you feel less than, to count you out, or to make you feel like you have no authority because it was literally given to you in God's creation of who you are. Let's go on to Genesis 2 and 7. And it says, Then the Lord God formed, that is created the body of man from the dust of the ground and breathed into to his nostrils the breath of life and the man became a living being an individual complete in body and spirit and then let's go over to genesis 5 and 1 this is the book the written record the history and the of the generations of the descendants of a of adam when god created man he made him in the likeness of god not physical but a spiritual personality and moral likeness so in these scriptures we see again we were made in the image, in the likeness, uh, 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 after, after God. And so one of the points we have to remember is that we as human beings are the reflection of God in the earth. We are the reflection of God in the earth. Only mankind 
was made in the image and likeness of God. Not animals, not trees. They might they might uh, uh, display God's goodness, and they might show the vastness and the creativity of God. But only we, only we as mankind, were made in the in the uh, image and likeness of God. We are the reflection of Him in the earth, and so we have been given dominion over creation and formation. And if and if we look back to Genesis two and seven. It says that when he made man, he breathed his life into man, into the nostrils of man. When God breathed his breath into us, he breathed the ruach, the wind, breath, spirit, ruach. The ruach of God was blown into the inside of us. So as we look at that from a spiritual authority standpoint, we have the wind, the spirit, the authority, the breath of God literally on the inside of us. It was, it was uh, uh, engraved into our DNA into our into our uh, 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 into our making into our creation God made us in his image he made us after his likeness we are the reflection of him on the earth and then he breathed his life into us he gave us power he gave us authority he gave us strength he gave us uh, 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 his spirit that is on the inside of us so we cannot allow the enemy to fool us as if we have no authority as if we have no power when we literally have it placed in our DNA Psalms 134, I mean 139 and 14 says, For we were fearfully and wonderfully made. You were literally fearfully because you were made after the image of God. Does God have any fear? I don't think he does. Does, does God uh, 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 have any 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 type of, of lack or does God have any type of deficiency? No. So we were fearfully and wonderfully made in the image of God. Let's keep going. Uh, let's go over to Psalm 8, 4 through 6. Psalm 8, 4 through 6. Scripture reads, it says, what is, man that, what is man that you are mindful of him? And the son of man that you care for him? Yet you have made him a little lower than the angels. And you have crowned him with glory and honor. You have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet. Let's go back. So what is man that you, this scripture, they're, they're, they're speaking to God. What is man that you are mindful of him? Who is this creation that you are mindful of him, that you care for him? Yet you have made him a little lower than the angels. And so a lot of uh, interpretations and a lot of uh, 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 different biblical readings, you will see then the angels. But in the original context, that what that scripture is really saying is you have made him a little lower than the angel. And, and, and a lot of times when we see in the Old Testament the reference to the angel, it really means Elohim. So what that scripture is saying, you have made him a little lower than yourself. Remember, we were made in the image and likeness of God. He breathed his breath into us. We are the reflection of him. He made us a little lower than him. Think about this from an authoritative uh, perspective. We have authority. We were made in his image. We were made a little lower. We were sat a little lower than God himself. And then the scripture says, and you have crowned him with glory and honor, and you have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands, and you have put all things under his feet. We, so if we even go back to Genesis 1, we know that there is a breakdown of everything that God created. And if we look uh, in Psalm 8 of what we just read, we see that God put all of that in our possession, in our, under our dominion. So he, when he created us, he placed us in a, in a place of, of dominion and it placed us in the seat of reigning, not reigning like water drops, but reigning as in R-E-I-G-N, reigning, seated in heavenly places, reigning with authority, with power, with royalty, reigning. So we have spiritual authority. Even if we look back to Genesis 1, um, because it says over all the works of your hand. So even if we look back to Genesis 1, it says in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Notice that it says the heavens. And if God has set us and given us dominion over all the works of his hands. And it says in the beginning, God created the heavens 
and the earth. That means that God has given us authority not only in this place, not only uh, uh, in this realm, not only uh, on the earth and in the tangible, but we have authority in the heavens. It says heavens, so therefore there is more than one heaven. You have the first heaven, uh, which which is in reference to when the scripture talks about how Satan is the prince of the air. So that is that is the first heaven. You have the second heaven, where um, if you study uh, uh, Daniel, and Daniel was seeking an answer from the Lord, and, and he began to pray, and the Bible says that he prayed and fasted for 21 days, and then the message angel came down, and when he came down, he said, look, I'm sorry, man, but I was held up in the second heaven fighting the prince of Persia. So a lot of times, uh, many believers and theologians, they believe that in the second heaven is where uh, there is spiritual warfare, where the battleground is, where angels and, and demons, they fight. Uh, uh, and then the third heaven, you can remember where Paul says that I was, when he was knocked off of his beast, he said, I was called up into the third heaven. Now in the body or out of the body, I don't know. But uh, that's, that's where the holy is, the holy place. That's where God is. And so we have dominion even in the heavens. Why? Because he has given us uh, dominion over all the works of his hands. And so even if we look at Hebrews 2, 5 and 8, it kind of reiterates what Psalm 8 was saying. It says, uh, it was not to the angels that God subjected the world of the future about which we are speaking, but one has testified somewhere saying, what is man that you are mindful of him or the son of man that you graciously care for him? You have made him a little lower in status. Now this part says in status than the angels. You have crowned him with glory and honor and you have set him over the works of your hand. You have put all things in subjection under his feet. Now putting now in putting all things in subjection to man, he left nothing outside of his control. But at present, we do not yet see all these things subjected to him. So even in this one, we see that uh, uh, um, it says you have set him a little lower than the angels. And so even if we look at it from that perspective, we do realize that, okay, in our natural makeup, we have been set a little lower than the angels as it pertains to angelic beings. Why is this? Because angels have capabilities that we don't have. They have have abilities that we don't have. Angels can travel much faster than we can. They can go literally go to places that we cannot go to. And so we, we sit a little lower than them in that perspective. But in, in the personhood and in the likeness and in the image of how God created us, we sit right under him. We, have, we sit a little lower than Elohim. We sit a little lower than God. And so even in this, uh, let's travel over to Psalm 91. Uh, remember, we're talking about our right to fight. We will no longer allow the enemy to cheat us out of fighting. I believe, and this is just a little break off, I believe that sometimes we overuse the word or the word spiritual warfare. I think that we see people a lot of times and, and it's like, all the times like they're under attack or whatever, they're going through life or life is just really life and at the time and it's like, you talk to them, you're like, man, how you doing? Man, I'm going, I'm, I'm a spiritual warfare, spiritual warfare, spiritual warfare. I think that we call a lot of things spiritual warfare that really are spiritual warfare. If, even if we look at what warfare is, warfare is when two oppo uh, 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 opposing armies come together to fight over something. So, with that being said, if there is one party that is not fighting, how can we call it warfare? I think a lot of times we see people, or we experience people in life that, that are deeming it to be spiritual warfare just because they're under attack. But you being under attack does not make it warfare. That just makes it, you're under attack. What makes it warfare? is when you choose to say, you know what? I'm under attack, but I'm going to fight back. That is when you have now participated and said, you know, I'm participating in warfare, whatever kind of spiritual warfare that might look like. And I think sometimes we even can over-spiritualize spiritual warfare. I think a lot of times we we can we, we think that spiritual warfare is when you got demons knocking over stuff in your house. Now that could very well happen. And you got stuff talking to you in your ear and you got uh, uh, stuff bothering you in your sleep and you got demons coming in your room late at night and, 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 and getting on your back and getting on you and choking you out. All of that is, you know, a type of, uh, of spiritual warfare. But even, I think 
think that we even in that we can we can miss out on the everyday spiritual warfare on the practical things uh, we let them slide by uh, uh, we, uh, spiritual warfare can look like sickness uh, uh, do you just accept sickness into your life or do you fight against that thing uh, it can look like depression anxiety uh, do you just say claim it as yours and say well you know my anxiety is kicking up on today or do you fight against that thing do you engage in warfare um, if we look at Psalm 91 and drop down to 11, Psalm 91 and 11, it says, for he will command his angels or he will give his angels charge over you. This version says, for he will command his angels in regards to you to protect you and to defend you and guard you in all of your ways of obedience and service. They will lift you, they will lift you up in their hands so that you do not even strike your foot against the stone. And I think a lot of times we even kind of misinterpret that scripture. We think that the angels, when it says they, that he will give his angels charge over us, I think that we kind of misinterpret that and think like, oh, that means that the angel angels are in charge of us or, or, or that we worship them or whatever uh, can come to mind. But what that means is, it's almost like the angels have been given to be your guardian or, or, or your bodyguard in a way. Um, they've been given charge. I charge them to to keep you, to to make sure that they war for you, to make sure that, that as the scripture says, that you don't even dash your foot against the stone. So these are all things that reiterate our authority that was given to us by our Lord and Savior. And so, uh, even if we jump over into the New Testament, one of the main reasons that I believe that Jesus came to the earth was to place us back in position and place us back into our priesthood, giving us back our authority to be and operate as we were created. I think it is a trick of the enemy to come in and to trick you or, or, or to bring on false identity, to make you feel or think that you are not who God has created you to be. As even uh, even a lot of times what the enemy will do is he will come in uh, uh, showing you what you have or trying to make you go out after having stuff than actually being who God created you to be. So you see a lot of times, even in the New Testament, we even see the story of the sons of Sceva where they saw uh, 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 the apostles casting out devils and then they went and tried to do the same thing. Uh, but they had not been given that authority. They wanted to have something, but they weren't trying to be something. They weren't trying to be the image of God. They weren't trying to be after his likeness. They weren't trying to be a follower of Christ. And so therefore, even if we look at that story, uh, it says that the sons of Sceva went before and when they tried to cast out devils, they said, we cast you out in the name of Jesus whom Paul preaches. So they didn't even have a, a relationship with this Jesus that they were trying to cast out devils with. And so, um, even if we, if, if we go back to some more scripture, let's look at, uh, uh, John 14. And I'm going to say this as well. So Jesus came to give us back our authority or to place us back in authority, put us back in position, position, but also Jesus came as our example. I think that that is a thing that a lot of times we miss that Jesus came as our example. Although he was divine, he chose not to operate in his divinity on earth because he wanted to be an example. He knew that if he operated out of his full divinity or operated as God fully, that, that we would not have a point of entry uh, uh, to do what he did. And so this is why he even says in John 14 and 12, if we turn to John 14 and 12, it says, I assure you and most solemnly say to you, anyone who believes in me as Savior will also do the things that I do, and he will even do greater things than those, because I am going to the Father, and I will do whatever you ask in my name. And I like how the Amplified puts this in there, as my representative. Remember that we are the reflection of God on the earth, not just as a mirror reflection, but meaning that we do, we operate in a place, of, in, a, in a realm of of dominion and a place of authority that God that God has given us that Jesus has given us so so it says that whatever you ask in my name as my representative as my reflection here on the earth as the one who was fearfully and wonderfully made as the one who was made after the like after the likeness and the image of God this will I do so that my father may be glorified and celebrated in the son. If you ask anything in my name as my representative, I would do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. 
So this shows us that our spiritual authority resides in the place of being in good relationship with Jesus. We have no authority outside of him. It comes from him. We and we activate it by knowing who we are in him, knowing who he has created us to be. Then once we know who we are, we know what we have and what we have, we know how to use. So let's turn over to Ephesians 2 and 4. And we're almost done, guys. Ephesians 2 and 4. It says, but God being very rich in mercy because of his great and wonderful love with which he has loved us even when we were spiritually dead and separated from him because of our sins he made us spiritually alive together with Christ for by his grace uh, his grace undeserved favor and mercy you have been saved from God's judgment the Amplified just puts all these words in here sometimes you get tongue tied and he raised us up together with him when we believed and seated us with him capital him in heavenly places because we are in Christ Jesus there's another place of our authority we are seated in heavenly places we are seated in places of authority let's turn over to Romans 8 and 14 for all who are allowing themselves to be led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you have not received a spirit of slavery leading again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons by which we joyfully cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies and confirms together with our spirit, assuring us that we believers are children of God. And if we are his children, then we are his heirs also and heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, sharing spiritual blessings and inheritance. I like how that says that, sharing spiritual blessings and inheritance again. So if we are heirs and joint heirs with Christ, a part of, uh, uh, of what we receive in our inheritance or being an heir is uh, authority, is dominion. So we can't allow the enemy to say that we have no power. We can't allow the enemy to say that we have no authority. Literally, we are heirs and joint heirs with Christ to the throne of God. And so therefore, in our, in our uh, inheritance, there is dominion. There is authority. There is power. And it continues to read, it says, if we indeed share in his suffering, that we may also share in his glory. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that is about to be revealed to us and in us. For creation waits eagerly for the children of God to be revealed. I like how another uh, interpretation says, for uh, the earth is groaning for the manifestations of the sons and daughters of God. For the earth is groaning for you, for me, for our neighbor, for our brothers and sisters in Christ to recognize that we have authority in Christ, to recognize that we are seated in heavenly places, to recognize that we have dominion, to recognize that we reign, to recognize that we can legislate in the heavens, to recognize that he has given us authority and power, to recognize that we were made in the image and likeness of God. Matthew 16 and 19 says, I will give you, this is Jesus speaking, I will give you the keys, authority of the, of the kingdom of heaven and whatsoever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. That also uh, can be read in, in Matthew 18 and 18. Uh, but if we look at that in its original content, uh, original reading, it was it says, "I have been, I have given you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever you bind, having already been bound." On, uh, in heaven, you can bind it on earth. And then what? Uh, whatsoever you loose on earth, uh, having already been loosed in heaven. So therefore, we have access into the heavens. We have access to know what uh, to discern what God has bound in heaven, what God has loosed in heaven. And if we operate in the place of dominion, if we operate in the place of authority, we then tap into a power that says, okay, he's given us these keys. He's given us this authority. So now I know that sickness is bound up in heaven. I know that rejection is bound in heaven. I know that sexual uh, uh, demons are bound in heaven. I know that lust and perversion and lasciviousness I know that these things are bound in heaven. So therefore, I operate in my kingdom uh, mind. I operate in my kingdom uh, 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 
just the word I'm looking for. I operate in my kingdom identity and I say that, okay, because these things are bound in heaven, I bind them here on earth. Because these things are loosed in heaven, because prosperity, because blessings and love and joy and peace long, and all of these things are loosed in heaven, I can loose them here on the earth. Why? Because I have been given authority to do so. I have been given authority to do so. I have been given authority to do so. And so I think that it is our job to remember, to never forget that we operate in a level of authority, that you can no longer be counted out by the enemy. Do not allow the enemy to trick you to the place of thinking that you have to wait till Sunday to let someone else lay hands on you. Do not allow the enemy, although we believe in these things, we, we wholeheartedly believe in these things. We believe in the laying on of hands. We believe in the casting out of devils. Trust me, we're going to cast the devil out of you. <laughs> but although we believe in partnering to do these things, we also believe that you have been given authority to operate in the heavens to operate in an authoritative place to operate in dominion to operate in power over your life over your children's lives over your family's life you do not have to allow the enemy to wreak havoc in your family in your life in your members in your body in your soul you do not allow him to do or torment you any longer let's conclude with this Ephesians 6 and 10. Finally, my brethren, my God, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the full armor, the whole armor of God, that ye may withstand against the wiles of the devil. I'm reading King James Version now because it sounds a little bit more sanctimonious. <laughs> For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the full armor of God, that ye may withstand in the evil day, having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girded about with truth, and having on the breast on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Well, guys, thank you for joining us again. We just want to, at this time, we just want to sow. So we're just going to say, hey, just sow $6. You can text A-N-W-A-M-E-M -E to 77977. That is A-N-W-A-M-E-M -E to 77977. Sow your $6. And we're believing that God is going to do something just miraculous in your life on this week. Also, don't forget to join us back next week. We're going to be here same time, same place doing the same old thing going before the Lord learning about his word we're still going to be doing a series on uh, spiritual warfare it won't be me but it'll be somebody else so join back to see who it is and enjoy the word also meet us at 7 o'clock on Wednesdays meet us at 9 a.m. here in the building uh, for Sunday morning worship we'll be happy to have you here happy to love on you happy to go before the Lord and worship him and love on him and receive what he has to say back to us you guys enjoy your week enjoy your time uh, of getting back with uh, getting the school getting the kids back to school and getting back to work enjoy your day have a good monday have a good week god bless you